back. Today we're talking about this. Now, this I was reminded of from a, an article in a recent uh, Model Engineers Workshop magazine of a guy doing some modifications on his mini lathe. Now, it's a fantastic publication. If uh, if you're not uh, familiar with it, I'll leave a link to the website below. Uh, but it covers all sorts of um, parts, you know, fixtures, uh, questions about the tool. They also have a nice forum. So it's something you know maybe worth look, uh, checking out. Now this guy had done a, an article and he'd done some modifications to a mini lathe. One of the photographs he was indexing, and it reminded me of this. Now, this tool originally was designed um, for the box for lathe. It goes into the spindle of the headstock and it gives you a stop for when you're putting work into the chuck, like a depth stock every time, so you can get the work in there repeatedly. But then it morphs into a few other tools and one of them was you know, an indexing fixture. So I'll show you now the actual what it was originally designed for and then how it's morphed into, into the tools. So okay, how it actually works when it's originally designed. Is there's three main parts I'll show you in a second. But it goes into the spindle board headstock using a couple of spanners, firstly on the outer part and on what we call the draw bar. <coughs> Excuse me. Just tighten that up, doesn't need a lot. It's securely held in the into the spindle board. And then taking a little Allen key into this little grub screw that facilitates this rod. Which passes down the spindle and then sets the part where you want it in the chuck repeatedly. I'll just show you a picture of that now. So, the only other thing to just show you on here, just quickly, before we take it out and show you the, the main parts, is this little brass collar. Now, what this is for is if you're putting parts in and you need to drill a hole through the centre of the part, obviously at the end of the rod. Will, will get drilled as well. So this little collar, once the part's in, you set this up against your, your draw bar. Once your part's in there, you just basically slack off this grub screw, move it back a couple of inches, if it back up, machine your part, drill it, take it out to where you're doing. When you put your next, next part in, you simply remove, return up to the collar, and you put your part in, and then just remove it back a couple of inches, drill your part, etc., and you know. That's safe and it'll repeat every single time. So <clears throat> I'll just show you the, the main parts now. So as we say, we've got the actual rod itself that goes through the headstock for your parts to locate on the end with the, the collar. And then this besides a nut and a washer and a little grub screw, it's quite simple. This is what draws the draw bar up. There's a knot and a washer. We have the outer part, which you can see is reduced in the end to fit inside the bore. We have the draw bar and then a little grub screw. So, <coughs> as we said, this is tapered inside here. It's split so it can expand and the draw bar has a matching tape on the end to allow it to expand in there. Now the other thing is as well you can see there that's the grub screw which passes straight through the draw bar and locates the rod inside so what we've had to do is put a, a slot inside there to allow it to tighten up and down. And that is basically how the original part was made, designed and made. I'm sure you've all got very similar ones at home for doing the same sort of jobs. But then it evolved into, well I wanted something for some tapping in the lathe, so I wanted a drive handle. So <clears throat> this was taken off a, another job, a simple handle. And all I did then to facilitate it was to Drill an hole in the outer part of there, which will locate the drive pin, which is just basically a roll pin that's been added into there. So that goes in like that. 
the whole fitting goes back in again. Simple case of nutting your washer on, and yes, you've guessed it, we have a drive handle. So again, just nip up. So, and we have the perfect drive handle for tapping, etc. But then, it went on from there, I needed to do some scribing of a, a dime. So, I thought, well, we need some indexing. What can we use? So after a bit of thinking, I thought, let's use our old friend. And this is what we did. So the first thing I made was this new nut. Which goes on the, to replace the original that goes on the back. This is machined down, as you can see. So it fits the change wheels of my lathe. Now, you can use sort of any number you want. 60 is a good one, you get a lot of combinations, uh, but you can use anything obviously that you want because all the change wheels are obviously the same fitting. Now this is left a little bit shy of the actual full thickness. So you, you've got the, um, the draw on the draw bar, you know, it facilitates, it becomes part of the, the process of, of the draw bar. So what it does, goes back in, everything exactly the same as before, tightens up the same, but now like I said the chain wheel becomes part of the process and that is locked on there solidly. But we need some way of obviously indexing this round. So what we did, we made this plate which holds the detent pin. Now that is machined to fit the profile of your change wheel. Now it mounts <coughs> is simply my two screw, two bolts, Allen cap head bolts. I've actually drilled the casing for the back for the rear door. And tapped it so it mounts on. Now, if you don't want to do this, I'm sure using the quadrant and the change wheels, you could make a little bracket to come out just to hold this this pin. So it's quite simply just mounts on like so. You'll see when it's on, it's extremely solid. Don't have to be tight, don't forget this is only an alloy. It's all it needs, it's rock solid. And then once you've, you've decided where you want to divide, just mark them off. Simple case of a little grub screw located in. And a little tip what I've made, if I just pull up slightly on this plate and push down at the same time, once up as a lot of the grub screw, it secures that in an absolutely rock solid and there is no movement whatsoever. I cannot move the chuck. Ends of solid, you know, for indexing. Uh, probably the, the best of, of the different modifications I've made over the years to different layers. This one seems to be the more solid, and it gives you very, very accurate for when you're indexing and scribing a, a change, a, a dial or something like that. So there you have it, YouTubers. The morphing of a tool. Now that's only three different things it can do. Considering it was only designed to do one. Like I said, I know a lot of you will have similar things to this with drive hands, etc., which could be modified through the, the other jobs. But also, is there any other jobs out there that you have done with one of these or you can think to one of these? Please put them in the comments below and let us know. Then we can pass on to the people and let them, let them use it. So thanks again for watching. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing to the channel, that would be fantastic. And until next time, YouTubers, it'll be great.